welcome to the Miracle Mansion podcast. My name is Marcus True. I'm Head of Treatment Counseling at the wonderful Broadway Lodge. I have the spectacular, most amazing. Do you want me to Yeah, so um, my name's Ben. Um, I was here at Broadway three and a half years ago. It's gone so quickly, is not it? Oh my God, it's been yeah. a while. It's been I, a while. I was just, uh, when I was driving here this morning, I was driving over, yeah. had a little tear in my eye. So I can remember like coming over here and just like, that the fear, you know, like trying to mask it. I'd like I'd been shopping the day before to get some nice new clothes to look good for when I turn up at my uh, treatment centre. And uh, yeah, and I just remember, you know, you guys have stayed part of my recovery for the past three and a half years, and I'm still real close to you guys. Come here and do shares, and you know, I always give back to this place. Yeah. You know, I've got I've got mixed emotions. I think about it because it's just you know, I knew nothing. You know, John Kennedy, when I turned up here on my very first morning, was the first person I've ever spoken to about any kind of recovery. Any, like I, I was completely unaware that I had a problem. Yeah. Completely, you know. Where, so, well, of course, I did, so tell me, how did we get to the point when you realised that you needed to come into a place like this? How did, how did that yeah. all happen? Okay. So yeah, I was thinking about this in the shower this morning, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I was like, I would love to say to you that when I came here, I knew that I had a problem with drugs, and that I was coming here to get some help and get it sorted out. That I wish I could say that. That isn't my truth. Okay. When I I came, I decided that the way to get my wife back, who had left me because of my addiction, okay. she would, if I could get in here. Right, go and do some treatment because she was screaming at me, you need help, you need to go to rehab, you need right. to go to treatment. And I would, uh, and I was like, if I do that, I'll get my wife back, yeah. get my kids back in my life, and it'll be all okay. So the mentality I had, is, it's the same as when you asked me last week if I would do this podcast, it was the same thinking. My head was like, okay, well I've listened to the other podcast and I, I sent you a text saying, oh great, Love them. Never expected you to ask me, but just thought, you know, they're great. I was listening to my lunch break, and I was like, these guys that we've already spoken to, you know, I can, you know, some real bad trauma, and you know, like, were what well, in in my past I would perceive as an addict, was, you know, somebody homeless. That that wasn't my experience. So I'm, I'm like straight away, I'm not like looking at it, but I can relate to all the stuff. I'm I'm like I'm different. Yeah, look at the differences. Yeah. yeah, so I would say it was a really good little message for me. And it was a, so I came in here with that attitude when I arrived three and a half years ago. I was like, do four easy weeks, right? I work out the game that Marcus and his team are playing. I, this is my truth. I know, I remember, yeah. so I remember it. I, I think I'm a smart guy. Yeah. If I can work out the game you're playing, I can outplay you at it, get past you, get four weeks done. My wife's going to be open armed, and I'm going to walk home, and everything's going to be great. And I can go back out, and I can use successfully on a Friday night with my friends, and I can carry on drinking alcohol. <laughs> that is the honest, God's honest truth. That was what my where I was, you know. That's, and I thank God it's not that today. <laughs> <laughs> How did that all work out for you? Well, you know what's beautiful about this place was that. I came in that attitude, you know, I wasn't judged and I was, you know, you know, treated the same as everybody else, much to my horror. Thought you were gonna treat them very differently from me, because you know, my consequences weren't as bad. I was drug specific on cocaine, it wasn't heroin, it wasn't yeah. things that I had perceived as different. Yeah, or worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what was great was the way the staff worked with me, with the love they, you know, when I could have done myself. You guys love me. Who was your counsel then? My counsel was Louise. Oh, the, oh my God. An honourable shout out to the beautiful Louise. A massive shout out to Louise. Oh my God, she's still here. I know. Can I tell you a quick, quick story? What, because story. she smashed me to pieces in seven words. Right? It's dead, dead true, right? Because I didn't, you know, I've learned about people pleasing and part of me, that's a big part of me. And um, so, Louise had asked me to do some work around my consequences, mm -hmm. right, around my step one. Uh, so when I first arrived, I'm about the second day in, and I had written this out in my best handwriting beautifully, because I was like, keep it easy, Ben, make sure that they're all pleased with you, and then you can just go on free. <laughs> so I've done this, right, and I've written it out beautifully, it's all laid out, bullet pointed. Yeah, very, very professional. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've, I've gone up to Louise, and you know, Louise, 
sat down with me and I put it in front of her and I went through it, how well I'd laid this out and here you go. And she said these seven words to me, why are you trying to please me? And I burst into tears because she just, she just caught me and I was like, she goes, what are you trying to impress? What, who are you trying to impress here? But, you know, it's not, you're not getting scored. It's not, you're not going to get a tick and a well done and a pat on the back. And it just literally broke me. And at that point, I was like, you know, I could, that, that was the first time the mirror got really like held up to me. Wow. And I was like, and I just went, Doof. and it was, a, it was a massive moment in here because from that point forward, you know, the only, you know, when I said that before about coming here with all that stuff going on and how I was thinking, there was a caveat to that, which yeah. is why I think I'm still clean and sober today. Okay, what's the caveat? My caveat was, I'm going to try and listen to what they say, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be a bit willing. I'll try what they suggest. I love that. I'm going to be a bit willing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeez. The bits I don't like, they can they can do one or that. Mm -hmm. But the bit, you know, I'm, I'm going to listen to what they have to say, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take it on board. Mm -hmm. So that, thank God, I had that bit of willing mm -hmm. because I, you know, without that bit of willing. I don't, I don't think for any reason I would be there, there's no chance I'd be there today. Well, it wouldn't have worked, would it? No. Never would have no. It wouldn't have worked. So, just having that bit of willing that I was, you know, I wanted to engage in the treatment, mm -hmm. I wanted to explain to the counsellors exactly why I was using cocaine, because obviously I had my reasons that I believed. Yeah. yeah. I didn't accept that, I, you know, I was one of those. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, but by being that willing, and, you know, I remember on my first group therapy, just like, right, I'll tell you why. <laughs> you know, straight in. I went straight in and, you know, and big shout out to another counsellor here, Andy. Andy, so good for me in group therapy, you know, just, you know, I told my story and then they started questioning. And, you know, my delusion, my blaming, my minimising, my justifying, all of those things got slowly melted away and it was about my second week in and I remember sitting bolt upright in bed and just suddenly, I'm an addict. I can't control this problem. I can't get this problem solved on my own. And looking at all my other behaviours and realising where, you know, you know, today, so like for today for me is, you know, I have complete acceptance that when I use cocaine, something in my body and mind is very different and I cannot stop. My acceptance around alcohol, whilst I've remained sober for three and a half years, my acceptance around alcohol goes up and down. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I wasn't physically addicted to alcohol, but I know that every time I tried to control my using of cocaine, every time I tried to control that, was that when I would get a couple of days, go and have a beer. Yeah. The minute I put a beer in me, I want cocaine. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm straight back to it and then I'm using daily. Yeah. And I can't stop. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Because everybody thinks that like, you have to like you have to hit rock bottom and and lower than rock bottom and you know you have to be injecting no. you have to be injecting heroin and using methamphetamine met met and yeah. you know and be losing your liver and all that stuff to come into rehab and no. you absolutely don't no you absolutely don't no and that's what you know you know Andy again the words yet yeah you know I started to put cocaine into my roll-ups you know so I'm starting well, right at the end of my using right so so I, you know, cocaine wasn't doing for me what I needed to do to take away how I felt. Yeah. It wasn't doing that. So I was trying, it was going forward and, you know, thank God my wife helped me accountable and said, I cannot do this. You're absolutely a lunatic. Like, you, you, you know, I, you know she, I didn't know she'd been to the divorce lawyer. It was over. She was done, checked out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And well, firstly. Honourable shout out to Andy for his group for it. But most importantly, honourable shout out for you, um, to your Layla, wife, yeah. yeah, to Layla for actually saying, "Dude, I'm done with you." Yeah, and actually putting those things into action. What's she been? What she she must have gone through some stuff for her to have got to that point with you. Yeah, so so I used to go to escape my wife at night time. I would go to the casino in Bristol. Yeah, and a lot of the time I would just sit in the car park using cocaine. And I wouldn't even go in the casino. I would, you know, some of them would, but you know, I'd be in the toilets. But I'd be, you know, cocaine was the, was was the was the one I needed. Yeah. And um, I was just my train of thought there. So she went to. Oh uh, yeah. So so she went actually to Gamblers Anonymous. 
Jeez. And they paid for some support for her, for some counselling. So she, I think she had half a dozen counselling sessions. Yeah. And they were like, you know, he's on a train to destruction and you're still on the train with him. Yeah. Like, you need to get off the train. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and later at that point, you know, she started to look at herself. She'd be definitely, you know, please change, babe, please change, babe, please change, babe. You know, you, you don't love yourself. How can I love you when you don't love you? You know, your way you're living is disgusting, it's horrible. And, uh, yeah, and so she started to hold me accountable. And, yeah, and at that point, out the door, my friend. Yes, sir, because if it yeah. wasn't for her, who knows where you'd be right now. Yeah, so she left me on June the 27th, and I came in here July the 17th. Yeah. As I said in my uh, little way of, I'm going to get her back. Yeah. 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 How's, how's, tell me about business and because obviously you you running your business. Yes. Yeah. So so I came I, when I came out of treatment, um, I did the suggested things. What I do it in here, what where you guys pointed me. So look I still do my two meetings every week with Cocaine Anonymous, mm -hmm. you know, try to work the steps in my life. I got sponsors, sponsored, did all of that stuff and um, so you know my, my history is that you know we have a family business, one of the shareholders, you know, a business that I've taken from Taken from the people that work from it, taken from my parents, taken the money straight out of it, and I, you know, till it was on its knees when I came in here, sucked it dry. Yeah, sucked it dry. Yeah. You know, padding my expenses, everything I could do to keep the uh, to keep the thing of use and keep it going. Yeah. And yeah, when I came out, so I've done this kind of honest look at myself, and I started to go through the steps, and I, I, um, I was like, I've got to do this in every part of my life. I can't just do it about me and my home life. I need to do it in how I work because as a leader of the business, the business is a mirror of me. Mm -hmm. So when I think back to four years ago, my business was unaccountable, staff doing what they thought they should be doing, not really having any direction. Mm -hmm. It was manic, there was nothing in place. So it's dysfunctional. Completely dysfunctional. Chaotic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I took a, you know, I worked, what I would come to learn was first of all, admit it's a problem. Step two was kind of like, we get some help and then we got to change. So I went through every department of the business. I know, first of all, I stood up in front of my company, in front of the staff and I went to all of them and I made them amends to them. Said, I'm, you know, I'm going to change, I'm gonna, this is what I'm doing. I can't promise I can do it, I can do it today and I'll keep trying to do it every day. And we went through the business and we changed every part of the business. You know, this year we've just grown by 51%, which is, you know, we've got, we've gone, from, we had 16 staff at the start of last year, we've got 32 now. The business is flying, but you know, we've become an accountable business. You know, look, look, look to the stuff that I learned in here, and which I carry on learning that you guys are pointing me onto. I carry on learning, you know, like I did a lot of reading, and a lot of studying, and kind of what, what's going on here, why are we behaving like this, the behavior within the business, and being honest with people when it's uncomfortable. So I didn't want people to, in the business, I was like, I want you to be honest, even if it's uncomfortable. I want you to be honest, not just with ourselves, I want you to be honest with our customers. Don't make excuses if we mess up. Be honest, own it. So we applied all of that, and for some, you know, and then it, I wanted to be socially responsible, so I made the carbon, we became carbon neutral in January. It attracted more clients. You know, we just kept on working on ourselves and looking at ourselves. Because I'd spent so much time about looking outwards, and I'd never started to look inside of me or inside of us. It, it was because the business isn't doing as bad because it would be okay, but this is happening. There was always something. There's always, else. An, excuse. There's always an, excuse. Yeah. Yeah. an excuse. Yeah, Do you know what? I, and I have to say this right. So sometimes, um, sometimes the twelve steps gets uh, it gets some negative publicity. Yeah, and I always say to, I always say to people. For those, for people that uh, know anything about the 12 steps, if you understood the 12 step process, there is no negatives about it, no. none whatsoever. But it's people that generally uh, don't understand it or, or have some misconceptions. Yeah. Um, and what you've done is, what you've done, and I'm, I love, cause I remember we were talking business wise the other day about yeah. some, how things have changed, some things you were giving me some, some advice on. Um, because what you've done is you've just applied the spiritual principle of the self to a twelve step program to your business yeah. about change. And we call them the promises. Oh my god. So the go promise with, one yeah. is open and honesty must come first and all we do. Wow. Yeah, so that's our first promise. We've got seven promises. 
that I've laid. No, the, the so you, say you say you bought that. You you. It's all over the walls and the work. So open and honesty will come first, and how we deal with ourselves, our customers, our suppliers, and anyone we come in contact with. So that's our that's our promise one. We call it promise one. So it's the concept promises. Yeah. You know, from the twelfth step. Absolutely. I just I just spilled out what I learned, and something happened. The business now is two like two and a half times bigger than when we you know. Yeah. It's a profitable business, which it wasn't at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, I didn't focus on the, I didn't fo- like it's the same as with addiction, I compare it. I didn't focus on the concept being profitable when I came back out of yeah. rehab. I found, I, I concentrated it on being a better business. So we looked at, we were honest about it. We put in procedure, we put in accountability, we put on how we act. So we wanted to be a socially responsible business. Mm-hmm. So I started to empower the staff, work with my staff, be honest with them tell them, you know, give them feedback. So we did all of that, we did all of that, and it, and it just, it's the same, I always think that people go up to, you know, you fall to your procedure, you never achieve your goals. So me on my own, I can't stay clean, right? But I can stay clean if I follow a procedure. I do certain things every day, mm-hmm. I stay clean. Mm-hmm. So I've achieved my goal, but when I tried in the past to stop using cocaine all the time, couldn't do it. It's the same as the business. If I don't if I follow the procedure and I stick to the simple things that I bought into the business, we're very successful. When I when I try to go for my goal and I stop doing all those other things behind, being open and honest, all of that stuff, the business fails or goes backwards. So the business is doing well. Yeah, family are doing amazing. So bless you know, God bless Layla. She uh, uh, she she said when I came out, she said oh, the change the. She calls my addiction Damien. Right. Right? And she goes, I love Ben. I hate Damien. Like, look. And thank God I've got her in my life because she can still to this day look in my eyes and go, Damien's a playman. Yeah. Because it isn't around cocaine now. No. Food is yeah. one for me. Yeah. She's like, do you need to be doing this? Like, you've just had a, stru- a bad day at work. Why are you sat in there chucking down chocolate? And I'm like, yeah, like, she can see it, you know? Like, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so she, she's, she's on it, you know. Yeah, she's in recovery with you. She is, yeah. yeah well, our family recovery. recovering. Yeah, 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 absolutely fantastic. Do you know what I love about this is, I, I love the fact that, that, that she's, she gets it, she understands it, yeah. and she can support you, however, it's your recovery. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know, I was always thinking, like, she'd be like, wait, you need to go to your meeting now. In, like, in three and a half years, she's never asked me to go to a meeting. No. She might have said, you. Babe, have you been to a meeting this week? You might need to go to one. Like at, normally at the end of I've been on holiday for ten days. Mm-hmm. I know we're going on holiday. Yeah. And at the end of the tenth day, like a couple of behaviours, so I was snappy and stuff. And she was like, "I bet you'll be really glad to get back and get to a meeting, aren't you?" I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just that nice, subtle suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Drop team with a lovely, loving him. Yeah. It's, I think the difference, isn't it, for me, is that you know when you get into recovery, and it's the same with business is that you own your shit. Yeah. So the only way I can put it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about the little boy that came in here. Yeah. You know, who was a, in a 42-year-old man body, came in, who was a little boy. Couldn't deal with how he felt. Couldn't deal with his feelings. You know, his behaviours were all over the shop. And, and today I don't try to own my shit. Do you know what, it's, this is, this, do you know what the, this is really weird, right? So I was, and you just said exactly the same thing I was saying in a group chat to a couple of friends that I was owning to my surrogate sister the other day, right? Now, you get, you, you hit like 18, 19, 20, and you're supposed, 21, you're supposed, I mean, you can vote, have kids and yeah. all that kind of stuff, right? But you're, 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 you're kind of, so you've got a job and you might be working and you might be running a family business or you're, but, and you think you're a man. Mm-hmm. Right, and I, I literally messaged yesterday, right, having had walking my dog and having a conversation with my sister because I crashed my car yesterday on the way back from my son's graduation, and my sister was talking about an article about that she saw about Stormzy and him just owning owning the fucking GQ that he thought he was a man but he didn't realise that actually mm-hmm. he hadn't grown up. Yeah, and and I was saying to my sister, it's funny because I, I was I was amongst my um. Was, uh, with my my son's mother and um, 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 
her mother, so the grandmother and the granddad. And I actually felt like a man and a father amongst them. And although, you know, I haven't used for a long, long time. How many did you know? It's 18. 18, well, yeah. So, but it's the growing up. It's the, I felt grown up. And I just, then I said, so I, I, I just messaged in the group chat. It really does take a process to feel like a man, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I even wonder sometimes whether I'd ever, if I'd ever got into recovery, whether I'd actually ever be a... Yeah, I don't think I would have been. I can talk about myself, I don't think I would have been. You know, like, just, you know, I, I always have, you know, when you start to see stuff, and you're like looking back over your life, and mm -hmm. you're like, I was always using something. Yeah. Just, it doesn't matter what the thing was. Yes. I was using something. Yes. If it was, if it was putting labels onto books in my ring when my parents were going through a divorce. Yeah. Uh, 15 years old, you know, I was soothed myself by doing something, yeah. yeah. I just don't, I just wonder, see, so like you, I think to myself, you know, I, I'm just so grateful for the people that come through this, this place or come into the recovery process and actually start doing recovery, but growing into being a man, I, yeah. mean, I can't speak for, I can't obviously, I can't speak for the women, but yeah. growing into being a man and actually taking responsibility as a man is actually a process. And I probably didn't even hit that until my 40s. And if I was really honest with you, I'm saying that, my 50s. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, there's still, you, you just keep learning, isn't there? There's always yeah. stuff. There's certain, yeah. there are certain areas of your life and you're like, you know, you're like, ben, come on. Get real, <laughs> but you know what? What? Thank God today, I'm willing and able to do that. Yeah. And look at myself, even when it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Which I definitely, you know, I wasn't. Have you still got the big kid in you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hundreds. Of, like, I, I've got a shout out to our business cafe because she has to put up with the big kid, and I know later has to pick up, put up with the big kid in you. Yeah. Know? And how does and how does he come out every now and again? Well, it's just basically like my, my children are like they just want me to tell stories. Like in in the kitchen, we're just like I'm just you know always pranking them and and stuff. Just lovely it? to be present for your kids, really present. You know, that's cool. Isn't it? Yeah, I can always remember my um, it was it was uh, I was having first time my family come to see me. Oh, right, okay. So when, I don't know if you play with me different. Visit? Yeah, yeah. So two, two weeks yeah. of human visit, and my my at the time George and my eldest was sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. And Rona was in was downstairs, and Georgia hadn't spoken to me for the month before we came in. You know, she was really angry at me, angry what I'd done to Layla, angry what was going on, and uh, she saw me burst into the oh, biggest tears and grabbed me. Oh, God, sorry. Yeah, remember that moment. And Rona, I don't know what she says to me, she said, Ben, I had to go in the back room and start crying because it was such a lovely moment. Yeah, yeah but that's what happens, you know, that's what happened to me. Horrible shout out to Rona, one of the nurses has been here for forever. I'm still at quicker submission. She, yeah. she regularly tells me on Facebook when we clock say hello. And she's like, Yeah, you're still my ever quicker submission in 20 odd years she's been here, I think. Well, I think, she, <laughs> no, I think she's probably, yes, yeah, well, she's probably getting into the 30 years. Is she? Plus, yeah, 30 years now. Yeah, yeah. She's lovely. She, yeah, amazing. And everybody, you know, it's funny, wherever I travel, wherever I go, wherever I see somebody, what they always say, his brother's still there. Yeah. Oh, the nursing stuff, they're incredible. You know, yeah, incredible. Well, everyone's incredible here, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll yeah. shout out to the nurses. Yeah. Not being funny, they, they're, they're the, really the foundation. Without them, you know, getting settling people in, getting the medication down, yeah. there, getting them help, getting the people healthy, we don't stand a chance in being able to do the therapy. No, and, and you know, they're, they're your very first people you come in contact yeah. with when you walk through the door. Yeah. You know, you're straight up to admissions. We don't get to the sleep counselors or any of that kind of thing. You know, they're the very first people. And from that first second, you know, it was just love. You know, it was just so nice. And I can remember being terrified because obviously, you know, looking back, I'd used the night before. I'd used all night. And then my wife had come to get me and she said, I'll drive you over and I'll drop you off. I think she was glad to get rid of me at that point. <laughs> and um, I can remember thinking, because I told Layla, obviously I just lied and I told her, I wasn't using for the last month before I came in, I used every day. And I've, I remember thinking, if they do a test on me and Layla's still in the room and she sees it, like, I'm never getting her back. Like, <laughs> you know, I remember that. And I was so grateful when I said, oh, you need to leave by now. So like, Layla left and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm right, I was like, what's in your blood? And I was like, cocaine and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 does she? Oh, well, she, she might even watch it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. She, we're all right. Yeah. yeah, we're all right now. We've got a lot more honesty than we used to. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I'm like, I'm like getting all nervous. No, she knows. <laughs> cool. So, how's the family and everything? Family's amazing. Cool. Yeah, you know, to you know, being grateful every day for that. You know, because it was destroyed. You know, my addiction had. You know, I wasn't there for my kids at all. You know, even when I was present, like physically present. You know, I'm in the kitchen, I'm doing what I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would try and chuck them 20 quid and daddy would go and buy me this. Yeah. Anything to try and keep them, everything on site, to keep the whole charade that I'm living going. Yeah. yeah that's it, isn't it? I see that laugh you can relate. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, it's just, it, I just love the word because it's like, it is literally a performance or a charade of yeah. nonsense. And, uh, and then to the outside world, once I've, once, uh, once you go out the front doors, then it's a, then it's the trying to keep up the facade that I'm, yeah. I'm professional or I'm this and I'm that. And yeah. actually, you're literally just falling apart. Yeah, yeah. So, so true, so true. You know, remember, you know, I've still got my desk at work, you know, and it's still got all the chop marks on my desk. Yeah. And I keep it there as a reminder that when I used to sit down at two in the morning, you know, like <sighs> sit down at two in the morning, tell my wife I'm working. You know, and I'd be sitting there using cocaine, and I'd be crying, saying, "I'm going to stop tomorrow." Ben, why do you keep doing this? This is ridiculous. Get some control. You know, you're weak. What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, all of that going on. You know, ten o'clock in the morning, I'd be out of the door, and I'd be using all day every day again. You know, and, I, and I, it just kept me in there because I just kept on believing. I kept on believing that, you know, I haven't. I've got the company. You know, I can keep the show art going. So I didn't feel the consequences and, you know, I've got loving parents that, bless them, yeah. which I, le- I understood now and learned today, they enabled me. You know, like my dad, I know that I could lean on him, could manipulate him. Dad, it's really bad. I've made a little mistake. Help me out. All right, I'll go and get you a loan. I'll take a loan out for you. Here's the money. You know, and I just carry on, obviously. Yeah. But today, you know, the relationships with all my family, you know, my mum was able to retire from the business. Because she was, she was the woman, you know, my mum would do pay the bills, yeah. and she was like, darling, your recovery's meant I could retire. So, you know, it gave her peace of mind, gave my dad peace of mind, my staff peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. At least they all know that that's another job. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 And it's just a, yeah, in all aspects of my life, you know. Well, well, just to tell people what it's like to be here in Broadway Lodge. What, what was it like for you? What, what was your, now you was here for four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah, four weeks. Four weeks, so. Four impactful weeks. It was impactful weeks. How would I describe Broadway Lodge? It was the most difficult thing I've ever done. And it's the best thing I've ever done in my whole life. God, if I can give a pound for the amount of people that have said that. Yeah, you know, like, getting honest with yourself, and I mean, as honest as you can go and people telling you about yourself you know which I needed that you know I definitely needed that because I, I was deluded you know <laughs> and I needed you guys to be honest with me and like I said at the very start you know if I can beat you at your game what game are you playing Marcus <laughs> when, I, when I know today is that it was a bit of love and you were like Ben I, you know I've got a way to help you I can help you I've got a team of people around me that can help you yeah. that's the game you're playing you're the game of saving lives yeah. and that's what Broadway Lodge does it saves lives yeah, it, yeah, and you couldn't come to a place where, because it wasn't my first one I was going to go to. Right, okay. So literally, I'm going on the internet, just hoping we have Sunset, and it comes up with another place, and um, it was more expensive than this place. And I said, Dad, I need, I need to go to rehab, I need to go to rehab. Really agitated, and uh, Dad was like, okay, well, let's just see what, what there is. And, and he said, found a Broadway lunch. And I phoned you guys up and was honest on the phone and say what was going on. And yeah, I mean, it's just so much stuff from Book Club, I like. So just, 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 just tell me, what, what made you decide in your haze that you needed to go to rehab? How did that even happen? I said at the start, it was about Layla. Look, I just want to get my wife back. Yeah, but, but why rehab? How did you even know about rehab? Well, just because, you know, just what I'd read and I was like, they, uh, you know, my expectation 
Yeah. Like, which is like, you were going to show me how to use properly. <laughs> that was what I was coming here for. That you were going to teach me that I can go out, I can drink on a Friday night after work, okay. and then once a month or once every three months, I can have a big blast out in London with my friends, and I can have a bit of cocaine. And, and, and <laughs> that was my thinking. Well, well, the reason why I'm asking you the question, Mike, is because when I came to rehab, mm -hmm. I didn't have a clue what I was coming to. No, I didn't. Somebody, somebody sent me here. And somebody told me this is what I had to do, so I just just went with it. So yeah. I was just I'm just intrigued at how you even how you even knew that you needed to even come to rehab. Well, it was later thrown at me. Oh right, okay. later had thrown at me in conversations. Yeah, and I, I'm so people pleasing and trying to get her on side. I'll just do whatever she says. Right, okay. What I did know, I, I was a, I was I was aware that my cocaine use was. A, was way out of kilter. Right, okay. Yeah, right. deep down, because I, I was crying at night, you know, I'm using it in my office. Using it against your will? Yeah, so I'm going, and I'm making solemn promises that I can do a life that I'm going to stop. That night, you know, wind the clock six hours forward, I'm picking up some more cocaine. Mm. And so I was aware, but I, I, my head was going, right, well, you're, you know, you're very busy on this festival, because we supply festival, so get that show done, then you'll stop. This one's stressful. Once you get that done, you can stop them. But you know, that, that's what keeps me in there. Yeah. Is that I'm always doing, I'm always putting off <laughs> today what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I just keeping it all going. Yeah. You know, and it's like I'll stop then, I'll stop now, I'll stop this week for this reason. I'll get this summer done, go on holiday with the family, and then I'm, that's it, I'm quit. Well I'd said that for the previous five years. It hadn't made any difference to me. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah. How did the business survive over the four weeks you were here? Um, and this goes out to all the other business people that, yeah. that want to come in. Yeah, yeah. The business will go on without you. It did. When I came out, I started to have boundaries, healthy boundaries, oh, right, okay. which I'd never had before. Right. I were people please. So, you know, when I came out, I said, Dad, you know, he expected me to walk out of here fixed, and I would be back in work on Monday, and I'd be working flat out doing what I needed to do. And I knew that, that I couldn't do that. Well, 100%. Yeah. So I just went away. Luckily, my very good friend, James, big shout out to James, he uh, gave me, let me have his filler for 10 days. Go on, James. Yeah, well, Yorker. Shout out to James. Yeah. Nice so one. we went over there and we reconnected as a family. So my wife and the, and the kids. And we, you know, did my stuff every day, got on YouTube, listened to shares, did whatever I needed to do. I came back and, you know, my dad was like, right. You haven't phoned me and told me what's the plan, what's going on? And I was like, hang on, Dad. And I was like, so what I did was integrate slowly back into the company. So originally I did two days a week, third, three, three days, days uh, four yeah. days, five days. So I built it up, mm. you know, and my dad was like, you haven't phoned me first. And it, it was very difficult for him. It was really difficult for him because I was different. Yeah. You know, I've learned about boundaries. I've learned about myself, I've learned about, you know, and I was trying not to do them. Yeah. So when I'm, when I'm going along with things that compromise myself, yeah. people pleasing, mm -hmm. I was trying to not do them. You know, I can still slip into it sometime today, but I do it a lot less than I did it four years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So your dad, literally, you literally had to pull your dad, the whole family, well, the whole family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your dad had to learn to change the way that he was dealing with you. And I think, well, codependent relationship. Really codependent, kind of very yeah. toxic relationship yeah. at times. You know, and and I had to forgive him, because, you know, I, my dad has always done the, for what, you know, he felt was the best for us as a family, mm -hmm. you know, growing up. But, you know, he didn't have a dad himself, and I, and I was, you know, I always grew up trying to live to his expectations of me, yeah. not my expectations of me, yeah. and I could never feel those. Yeah, yeah. You know, I could never get the affirmation that I wanted from him that was going to fill that inner hole. I know the feeling. Yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. I can absolutely relate to that. What we've learned to, is to dance to the beat of our own drum. True, yeah. Yeah, of our own drum. Yeah, I don't need, you, you know, it's nice to get praise, but I also, I don't need it. I know that I just need to do the right thing. Yeah. 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 And it, and it, and then it just comes. It yeah. It continues to come and it comes from all around it. And it comes from places that you don't expect. Yeah. Very much the same journey with me. I felt like I needed to, I just please my dad. And then yeah. when I stopped pleasing him and just decided that, no, I need to do my own thing. And then, you know, we disconnected and reconnected, and, and you know, he's proud. And, yeah, and I like boys. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We've got a great relationship, you know. You know, 
And my, you know, and my mum, the old relationship with my mum, you know, my mum, so my mum came from a uh, farmer and, you know, they were, and she, uh, when I was growing up, you know, mum was really caring and nurturing, but what she, where my mum would struggle is that, that she never told me she loved me, you know, not the words. Yeah. You know, everything she did for me showed me she loved me, yeah. but she never said, and I, I needed the words. Yeah. It's not about help, it's about yeah, me. Yeah, I yeah. needed to hear, I love you. Yeah. I needed to hear I'm sorry, and I didn't hear those things. Yeah. And I, and I, it made me angry and resented her. Yeah. You know, and if you had given me this, I would have been behaving like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Where, you know, I couldn't look at them with compassion. Yeah. Couldn't give them, if I couldn't give myself compassion, mm -hmm. why would we be able to give other people compassion? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that you said that because sometimes, um, and I often say it, I often say it that, that sometimes, as much as you see the behaviour, sometimes I don't know why we are the way we are, but sometimes the word just can't words kind of seal the deal. Mm -hmm. But then we forget that sometimes our parents, our parents, have been through their own stuff, and they're not of able. Yeah, they're not. They're, for whatever reason, then they're not able to deliver that. And that's the same with my dad. Yeah. You know, I know. You know, did, that's changed. Though. Yeah. Oh, massively changed. Yeah. My my dad's just my dad. He he was just. He was going through his own stuff, so he just couldn't say it. But yeah. there's somewhere in me I knew that he did. But, yeah. But because it was so difficult and traumatic, it, it didn't come out. But he's just so different. Now. Yeah. And they're just great. And my, my mum tells her, my mum can say, I love you. Yeah. Today. Yeah. You know, and I, we get, we hug. Yes. You know, I can remember the morning I came here, mm. you know, July the 17th, 2019. I remember her, she's angry at me, but she grabs hold of me and called me. And she said, babe, please go and fix yourself. You need to fix yourself. I can remember that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I felt the emotion. No, I, I, felt, yeah. the, I felt the emotion. Come yeah, it, it, but it, you know, it is big, isn't it? It's, you know, it's so, how different my life is. Yeah. You know, and a shout out to anyone that has the courage to try and seek that help, mm -hmm. you know, and all that delusion I had, thank God for Bull Relax. Thank God I came here. Yeah. Thank God you pointed me and allowed me to, Go forward and grow, you know, and break still to be able to get back to this place because I always will. And I always feel I'm part of Broadway Lodge, you know. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're just bigger than, just bigger than the, 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 the entity that we are. We're a yeah. family, it, it's a unit, you know. Um, pe you know I, people that come through Broadway Lodge, when they speak to us, it's like, yeah, I went through Broadway Lodge, and it's almost like a Bad. Yeah, it's like a bad job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that wasn't how I felt to start. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to get it done, gone, <laughs> out of here, you know? Like, yeah. this is just a tick box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, it's not a tick box. It's a life changing. Yeah. It's life changing. Absolutely. And it's not life changing just for you. It's life changing for everyone that comes in contact with you. Yeah, the ripple effect. Yeah, goes absolutely. Out. Spill it. Yeah. It, 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 it ripples out to your family and your friends. And yeah. Just amazing. It's, yeah, it is, it's incredible. It is incredible. And yeah. A big shout out to you, Marcus. Thank you. Yeah, big shout out to you and you know, your counselling team and yourself, you know, I'm so glad for the honesty that I was given to allow me to change. I felt like um, I felt like um, uh, that you and I we, we were able to re relate. So even though you know you're here and I'm there, yeah. you know, take putting aside the addiction as professionals. I think that we were able to yeah. relate back then. So I still, you know, like as soon as like you messaged me, I was like, oh, absolutely, Ben, yeah. dude, come in, let's chop it up. Because yeah. I've always felt, even back then, that we could relate. Because it goes beyond addiction, doesn't it? It goes beyond, you know, we just happen to be fortunate to be me and that, and me and that, the one that's like this. When you come in, you know, I know, I remember feeling very intimidated by you, very below you, you know? And something happens in recovery, you know, as you go away, you start to come up. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not looking down on somebody taking heroin, and I'm not looking up to somebody like you. Yeah. Now, the person, I'm level with all three, you know? Absolutely. And that's what's beautiful. It's called humility. It's called humility. <laughs> it's and that's what's lovely, yeah. Yeah. I, and that's the thing, I, I, obviously, a lot of people come in with, come into these places with their own stuff, their own issues. And, um, and I, the thing that I try to get across to everybody is, we're all the same. Yeah. You know, I know you know how you feel and where you're at. You know, you some people come in and they're up there looking down at you even be looking down on me sometimes. I know some people are down there looking up, but we're trying to just make sure that we're all the same, you know, even the staff, 
we're all the, we're all the same. That's yeah. how this works. And that's what you feel. Yeah. You know, the kitchen staff, you feel it. Yeah. You know, Matty would always have time for me when I was in here, like, you know, chat to me. It's that accountability, it's that being together, you know, that you rely on each other to play your part inside here. We're all the same. Yeah, and we can learn. And the thing is, is there's so many people that that have come in that, that you know, like you, you spoke to me about stuff. I thought, oh, yeah, business stuff or um, or team building stuff. And, yeah. and, and, and we all learn from it. We all can learn. We're all the same. And that's the thing about coming into Broadway. Well, not a place like this. I think coming into Broadway is we are all the same. Yeah. Do you, do you ever remember when you came, I don't know about for you, Marcus, but for me, like, I can remember, you know, because I run a business and all this, right, and I go out on social events, and I was like, my fear, how am I going to do that? Like, can I have a treatment? Yeah. How, like, how is that going to work? Yeah. You know, and my best friends I've been friends with since university, like, are they still going to like me? I have yeah. all these fears in my head running through, you know, like, yeah. yeah, really mad. Crazy, crazy things. In but the head. ones that matter stick by you. Absolutely. You know, big shout out to, you know, Jim, two Jameses and John, you know, these guys. All the Jays. Yeah, but we went out for a stag night. Yeah. For one of their stag night about a year ago. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were just so respectful. So, you know, did you have a good time? I had a great, great time. Yeah. We laughed our head off. Isn't it amazing, isn't it? Yeah. You, and, but you literally, you literally think that you're, yeah, that something's been taken from you and yeah. you're not going to be able to replace it. it. And yeah. You, yeah, and it's mad because tell me that you've had the most amazing times yeah. since you've left, haven't you? Yeah, we just like, we were, we, I could go and see them, go and do golf trips. You know, the people that should be in your life are there for a reason and yeah. like those boys, you know, where were our life before was going out on big mad days out. Yeah. You know, they, they go out and they have a drink, you know, they go out for a meal. Yeah. They're there, have a drink, that's up to them. They're not right with it. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. I'm absolutely fine with that. You know, I, that's a blessing of recovery. I don't need to avoid it. Yeah. And I don't need to seek it. Yeah. You know, just, and, you, and you can still have a good time with them. Absolutely. 100%. And I, and I just want people to kind of really, like you say, there is a life beyond substance misuse. There is. It, there, it, is. there is. An, in there, there's a. Yeah, it's so true. And it's absolutely cool. Yeah. You know, I've, like I, I've had, if I'm honest, I've had, I mean, obviously I can remember the days of, you know, just being off my head using and, and, and ecstasy and, and just thinking, this is the best ever. But I've got to say this, that, you know, a couple of times I've had some best ever moments in recovery where I thought that I would never get. I, I remember. Was, yeah. I, remember. I, I was in treatment. Right, and I remember thinking you were mental. Right? You come in and you've done the, you're doing a talk in the morning at nine o'clock, where Oh, right, the lecture, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said, it was a Monday, I think. Yeah. And uh, you come in, it's like my first week, and you said, been out with your boys, and you've been to clubbing, and you've been drinking Red Bull, and you've been dancing like a lunacy all night, and you said, I had one of the best nights of my life. And I remember in, I was thinking in my head, how? <laughs> like, angry at you, how? <laughs> well, you didn't use nothing. Like, like, cause I'm still there. Then, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. How have you done that? <laughs> you, you, you were saying it for my benefit. You were just saying it to manipulate me. <laughs> Not just, just you, just being genuine. So I've had a great night out of the boys. I, lo I literally, I love, that. I love, I love that because I literally, when I'm coming in and I'm, I'm just trying to get across to people, I'm living a normal life. Yeah. You know, yes, I'm an addict. I know that. Yeah. But I'm living a normal life. But I'm having these experiences, and you can have those. Yeah. And these are absolutely real. And if you stay in recovery, you are. If you stay in recovery, you're going to get these experiences. And I just want you to just pass them on to other, other people because this is real. Yeah, but you feel real joy. Yes. You feel real joy when you do have a nice feeling. It as is. much as you feel like I, you know, get emotional then and all sad, you still feel those feelings. Yes. But you can feel them today. Yeah. So when you laugh. You, you, you're laughing because you were really happy. Yeah. Did you have some belly laughs in treatment? Yeah, like proper, <laughs> like proper laughs. That, like, like, I was blessed with a couple of guys in here, you know, yeah. like, who I'm really glad to hear. One of the guys I was with, um, he went, unfortunately, went back out there. But he's recently, just in the last month or so, he's clean and sober, doing his stuff. He phoned me up and hope to get to visit him in Salisbury. But he, thank God for him, because he was challenging, but he was also, you know, his great sense of humour, mm. bit like mine, bit dark. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I, we, and we really did laugh, you know, we laughed and cried together. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it, it bonds you. 
you know, I've still got a lot of friends that I was in here with, you know, I'm still you just You just create, it. I think, because going for a place like this, you, people see you at your emotional, yeah. low, broken, but there's a, there's, there's a, there's a beauty in that. Yeah. Because it, it, you kind of, it's kind of like you, everybody then just forms a bond. Well, it's like being at war, isn't it? Yeah. When, you know, well, you're at war, you know, you know, so, you're fighting your hardest battle. Yeah. So, you know, you hear about soldiers that are still great friends, and it's like that. Yeah. You know, I, I fought my hardest battle at 42. Yeah. You know, I, I, I hope I don't have to fight anything so severe as that the rest of my life, but that was my hardest battle I ever fought. Because yeah. that battle myself. Yeah. yeah. You know what? It's funny when you, you equate it to like it's like a, a war. You know, there's soldiers still falling. Yeah. No, there is. are soldiers that, that that are still falling. There's soldiers that are still out there yeah. falling into addiction. There's soldiers that have come in here, yeah. male and female, that are still clean. But there's some of those that decide to go and get back into the war again. One that they will never win. Yeah, you will not win. You will not no. win. You will lose. And like, it's so key, isn't it? Just have, just knowing. Like I just, you know, after that step one is just important to me. Just knowing that I know where it's going to go. Like I know that I can't control it now. I know that, and I know what happens. <laughs> yeah. And you know where it's going to end up. Yeah. And the thing is, 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 and I'll say that to everybody, and I say that I've never relapsed. Yeah. But I can say to people. Really? Yeah. I, I, I say to people, but what I've heard is it gets worse. Yeah. So I don't fancy that. Again. No. I just, I just can't. No. And I do. And, I, and you know, you know, you're, you're in hell. I know Mike. Mm. I know. That if I did, that it's going to be worse because I'm going to lose everything fast, and it's it's going to be, and I'm going to have to use everything I've got. And I don't want to go there for anything. I've 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 shown myself over three and a half years I can live my happiest life. Mm. No, and that doesn't mean that my life's been easy in any way. I've had to deal with stuff. Mm. You know, I had a business for life on festivals that COVID happened, oh and I lost millions of pounds of sales overnight. Yeah. You know, and I had to put trust. You know, I had to use principles I learned in Broadway Dodge. Trust. Faith in a higher power. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That things are going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, and with that, the NHS started phoning us. Yeah. Can you supply us masks, hand sanitizers? You know, yeah. it happened. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's amazing. When you work your program, you, know, you can what you can achieve. Yeah, it's amazing. Really grateful. I'm just going to ask you two questions before we wrap it up. And I've loved chopping it up. I've got my dog downstairs and I, really, I, know. I wanted to bring her I wanted to bring Ivy into um, Ivy into the to into the podcast but I thought if I brought her in would she jump up yeah. and, and just mess up the flow so <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll better lift her out I want to ask you two questions and the first question I'm going to ask you is this if you were going to give somebody advice about what they would need to come to get through this really emotional process what would you suggest to reach out for help. Yeah. yeah, it's the simplest one. It's a, you know, look, I can, you know, for me, something deep down to, to, to side me knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I just didn't trust it. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm crying at night, I know, look, so I keep on using cocaine. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can feel the pain of what's going on around me, but not accepting it. Yeah. Is that, you know, trust that gut, trust your gut, and reach out and ask. Mm -hmm. Get some feedback, find out if you, you know, what, how is it for other people? It's kind of, you know, like it, it, that, it, it, it's it's that. Mm -hmm. it, that would be my advice. You know, you know, I don't look back. I don't regret what happened. It's happened. But would it have been good if I found it a bit earlier? Yeah, of course. But I found it. I found it, and that was all the will of what things happened. Right. So good that you found. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and the on. last question. The last question. A tip for recovery. Tip for recovery. Do you know, I think it's the same answer as the first question. Because I use it every day, is reach out. Like, ask for help. Yeah, there's stuff, there's, again, it's ask for help. Because being humble enough to ask for it, it doesn't have to, and it's not just about recovery, yeah. it's about life. Yeah. You know, like, when I came out and I wanted to change the business, I had to reach out. I had to phone people that have been successful in business and say, yeah. and I, and I, but that's what the, I was. I work my steps. Yeah. What I do, I go and ask people who are better business than me how they've achieved it, and they said, "Have you done this?" And I went, "No." I go, okay, and I learn. I talk, and it's exactly the same for my recovery. 
So oh, yeah. can I just finish off? Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah just a, yeah. Th- a thank you. You know, without you guys' intervention, I wouldn't have what I have today. And you know, I'm not saying that for the sake of camera. I'm saying that genuinely from my heart. Very well, thank you. I'll leave you with the last word. God bless you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming down. You're so welcome.